Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Final Fantasy Brave XPS. My name is Mars, and today I have a special announcement. I'm doing my first ever live stream. It's going to be this Friday at 8 p.m. Pacific. So my plans for that are to take on Odin 3 stars and probably die a lot and hang out, have a good time, maybe do some Overwatch or something else if we get bored of that. So yeah, thanks to everyone who has supported me along the way on YouTube. I know a lot of people have requested that I start doing things like live streams. So if you want to come say hi, see my pretty face, come hang out, play some video games, it'll be a great chance. And I'm, I'm really excited and also pretty nervous because <laughs> I've never done this before. So 8 p.m. Pacific this Friday. I will see you there. Link is in the description of the video. So if you'd like to follow now, feel free to do so. Um, and if not, I'll post a video here to notify when I've gone live as well. So look forward to seeing everyone there. Now, today's video is going to be about Seven Star Ico, and I know that it would make a little bit more sense if I were doing a video about the Halloween units, but I'm waiting for a reason, and that reason is because their enhancements aren't out yet. So I'd rather do, you know, a review video for each of those units once we have their enhancements and their full kits that we can look at, rather than, <laughs> you know, do one now, do some next week or whatever. So, aiko has been out for a couple weeks now, and she's honestly one of my favorite units in the game, uh, which kind of surprises me, because I don't normally love summoner characters, and I've never played Aiko's game, I don't really know anything about her. But as far as healers go, and as far as summoners go, I've found her to be the most useful of any of the ones that I own. And, yeah, honestly, I take her as much as I can, because she really is fantastic. So... Today we're going to dive into her kit, and this is going to be a little bit of a lighter review because, you know, with healers and support units, we don't have to go too detailed into builds or anything crazy like that. So we just want to look at Aiko, her kit, what she can do, and most importantly, kind of compare her to other healer and summoner options to see if she's worth the investment for you. So the first thing to take note of is her Trustmaster reward. It's pretty unique. It's the Angel Flute, which is uh, pretty much a one-of-a-kind, one-handed instrument that gives a whole bunch of spirit, uh, some magic, and 10% HP. So it's really good on units that have instrument passives, which is basically Ico and Lunera, if you're using a support Lunera. Um, aside from that, there aren't very many units who can benefit from the Angel Flute, but it's nice to have. Um, and on Ico, you definitely want it equipped. And her Super Trust Master Reward, before I forget, is a materia that increases your Evo magic by 30% and gives 15% HP, MP, and Spirit. It's a very good materia to have on your summoners, and it doesn't look like it has a stack restriction, so if you are the poor bastard who has pulled 16 of her, you could have the most overpowered summoner in the game, because um, it, it does appear that you can stack it. Um, but yeah, so if you've pulled four Icos or you've pulled enough of them that you can get her super TMR, absolutely get it. There's no reason to keep more than one seven star Ico. So spring for that if you can. Now, as far as her kit goes, you'll notice she has a lot of skills and we'll kind of break it down, uh, based on, on what each of them do. Um, I think one of the important ones to note right off the bat is her ability to cleanse breaks. She can cleanse attack, magic, defense, and spirit breaks with her respective moves, and they are AoE, and you can dual cast them because they are white magic. So if you want to reduce it, or remove attack and magic breaks from your party, you can just cast those, or remove the defensive breaks, whatever. Um, so that's one of the most unique things about her kit, is that she has the break rem removal sp spells on demand. She's the only person who has it. Like other healers, she has spells like Kiraga. She also has Esunaga, which is useful when it's useful. Uh, she has full life and raise. So she's got a really good basic healer kit in addition to being able to dispel breaks. Now, when she starts getting interesting is when you start looking at her summoner skills, which she had Crypto Performance at six stars, which is a healing skill that fills the Esper Gauge. And I suppose I should consume the Esper Gauge, although I would annihilate this poor Cactuar, so that you could see how much it fills, but it fills it by about a third, 
when you use Crypto Performance. This is what makes her a better summoner unit for the summoning than units like Yuna. Yuna has to use a dedicated ability to fill the summon gauge, and it only it, it doesn't do anything besides fill the summon gauge. So Aiko has all of these skills that she can combine with filling the summon gauge. Passion Performance is a really useful one as well because that boosts your limit burst fill rate while filling the Esper summon gauge. Extremely handy. It's 150%, so not as high as Eccentric from Riku's pouch, but it is high enough. Emerald Light is a heal healing ability that activates a barrier on the target, and it's a fixed 9,999 HP heal with a 2,000 HP barrier. So it's not the most amount of healing that you could have, but in a lot of fights, it's your tanks that are taking damage. So this is a great way to top them off and then throw on a little barrier for extra, extra survivability. Perform... Uh, uh, and so Emerald Light is one of her skills that she gets at 7 stars, along with Harmonics, which allows her to AoE full life everyone, which is great. Not that you typically need it a lot, but in the cases where you do need it, you have it. Emerald Light is her 7 star barrier skill. She gets Perform Apps. That's, what I'm, that's how I'm going to say that. <laughs> um, it recovers 100 MP to everyone in the party except the caster, which is why I can't cast it. And it also, like most of our other skills, fills the LB gauge. So she makes for a solid mana battery, especially because with her Trust Master equipped, she gets an extra 10% MP refresh. So that's pretty good. Now her one cooldown skill is a six turn cooldown available on turn one that removes attack, defense, magic, and spirit reductions. It removes fire, ice, lightning, water, wind, earth, light, and dark resistance reductions. So it removes all imperils. It removes stop, it removes charm, it activates a barrier, and it fills the evocation gauge. So this is actually a really nice skill to have in the cases where it shines. A great example of this is dealing with venomous vines, where you get imperiled, you get broken, you deal with stop, you deal with charm. In a pinch, you can use this ability to kind of erase all of that. It would only be better if she was able to heal in addition to doing all of that, but, you know, with what it provides, I'm honestly not that upset about it. Now, speaking of healing while providing immense benefit, her limit burst is uh, one of the things that I think makes her extremely useful. It heals your party a lot, it fills the summon gauge by a lot, and removes attack, defense, magic, and spirit reductions for all allies, so it removes all breaks. Now this spell, or this limit burst, is a 16.7 times modifier at base level, at 7 stars. So that means it's about as powerful as a Kiraja, while removing all breaks and filling the summon gauge. Uh, now the interesting thing to note about this is you're like, yeah well it's a limit burst, so what does it take to fill it? Her limit burst only requires 26 crystals to fill, and with her Trustmaster reward equipped, she gets, or no, 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 at level 120, she gets 100% LB fill rate. So it's really like 13 crystals, and you can fill her out with some gear to help her fill that more quickly. So she really does an amazing amount of healing, an amazing amount of Esper orb fill. That limit burst can do as much as 10 limit crystals, which fills the bar completely from empty. So, really good limit burst. In my opinion, it's not the most worth leveling because it scales the healing amount and it scales the lower bound of the range of evocation gauge fill that you can get. And for that reason, I don't think it's especially useful um, to, to level it. It's a great limit burst to have, a great one to use, but most of the time you're not gonna benefit tremendously from the additional healing and evocation gauge. So with that, let's look very briefly at builds and kind of give some basic advice. Um, with her Trustmaster reward equipped, she gets 50% resistance to um, stop and charm, which doesn't help her a ton. <laughs> you know, you may as well count it as not being resistant at all because, it, you know, if you get charmed or stopped, what, what good is having partial resistance? So, um... But having her Trustmaster Reward equipped gives her a lot of other benefits additionally. 
Uh, she gets plus 20% defense, spirit, HP, and MP, which is amazing. She gets plus 60% Evo Mag as well, which gives her very high Evo Mag for a summoner unit, meaning that she can do quite a bit of damage with her summons, especially if you're like me and you got super hype about Yevon's Wisdom and you farmed too many of them in one go. Yeah, that's something at least you can benefit from at this point. Now the other thing to keep in mind is that, you know, a lot of people will ask, well, does she need to be maximum level? Because there are a lot of 7 star units that you can get by at level 105 or level 110. Aiko is one of those units where you get all of her skills by level 110, but her level 120 passive is good enough that I would probably recommend that people go for it. Girl of Medane Sari gives her 30% spirit plus 50% spirit when equipped with the heart. Harp and 10% MP refresh per turn, and 100% limit burst fill rate. So this passive is very good. You could feasibly build her in such a way that you could get her limit burst off every other turn, and then you could summon Lakshmi on the turns in between, which means that you're cleansing all breaks every other turn, and you're casting a Kiraja, basically, or a full heal every turn. So. She's got some pretty immense healing potential, and then if you're using her for evocation, you can get quite a bit of damage. So, you know, that's, and honestly, like, there's not that much to her. I mean, you use, she's like any other healer, you use her skills as you need them. Um, I've just enjoyed using her a lot because I feel like the break removal is still a very powerful ability, even from her spell versions, let alone from her cooldown, Prayer of the Lost, or from her Limit Burst. So all in all, very powerful unit. She's who I used in the uh, Scorn of the Two-Headed Dragon fight. Made it very easy for me to get a summon off every other turn, so I go is fantastic for that. So a lot of people then ask the question of like, well, if I have Aiko, or if I have Ayaka, or I have CJ Fina, or like these other healers to choose from, which one is most worth my investment? And so since Ayaka is the unit that we have right now, I can compare to her real quick. Ayaka will win in terms of raw healing. I don't think there's any question about that. In terms of raw healing and barrier distribution and her limit burst, like those things lend to her healing utility immensely. The reason that you would choose Aiko over Ayaka is because you want a more quickly filled Esper gauge for Esper missions or for the extra damage or whatever, or because you want more consistent break removal. Because Ayaka's only source of break removal comes from her limit burst, which takes a whopping 53 or 56, depending on what level it is, limit burst crystals to fill without any high tide. So she's, <laughs> you know. That's her way of being able to remove breaks. Aiko's cooldown skill can also remove imperils, which Ayaka cannot do in any form, so... In my opinion, in terms of utility, Aiko's going to win, but in terms of just the raw healing power of Ayaka's limit burst and her healing skills and everything else, Ayaka's going to win. Her barriers can also be extremely impactful to help you survive tough thresholds. So basically choose the healer that fits the situation that you're going into. Now, as far as comparing to Lotus Mage Fina, who I have way too many of, this game hates me when it comes to Lotus Mage Fina. Yeah. Yeah, remember when I made that video of five Finas taking on the Blood Moon? Well, now I have seven, so I could almost do a full 10-man team of, team of nothing but Finas. And what I will say about Fina is that she becomes the re-raise queen at seven stars. So she is better in the instance that your team is not strong enough to head tank something, you can just use her limit burst or you can use her 7 star cooldown skills to apply re-raises to your team. So, you know, it's it's kind of, the which healer you choose depends on the strategy that you're moving forward with. If you know that your team is going to die frequently and you need that re-raise uptime, Lotus Mage Fina has no competition. If you could possibly tank it, or you need Ayaka's Limit Burst for like the break removal, the status removal, the the MP refresh, the everything that that provides, then cool, use use her for that as well. If you need summoning, then neither Lotus Mage Fina or Ayaka are, are going to help you. That's when you want to pick Aiko. 
Now the last healer I want to look at because Folka will come down the road and she'll make all of these healers look a little bit silly because she, she combines a lot of the best of both worlds. Uh, we'll look at Rem. Rem provides damage with healing and that's that's basically her spot. So if your team is to a place where you don't need an Esper Gage summon, you don't need re-raises, you, or you don't need many re-raises, I'll say it, or you don't need um, barriers or any of that, Rem is a really good option because with her boomerang dagger she can do a fair amount of damage, plus she has Kiraja so she's able to do a strong amount of healing, she can dual cast it in a pinch, her main drawback is that her re-raise skill is in fact a skill, which means that she cannot dual cast it, and she has a cooldown skill that can allow her to AoE re-raise the party, but it's only once every six turns. So gives and takes. If you just need, you know, some basic healing and you want to throw in some extra damage, or if you want a turn one Eidolon summon <laughs> uh, where she kills herself, then you know she offers that as well. So, in my opinion, at this point in the game, the verdict is that you can choose whichever healer you want. It doesn't really matter. If you find that there's a particular fight where you need one particular sort of support piece more than the others, that's when you can really dive in and make the investment. So for example, Aiko can perform quite well at level 110 if you wanted to just get her to a basic level. Then you could level her to 120 if you really needed her for a tough fight so that you can get the rest of her passives, so that you can get that extra 80% spirit, that 100% limit burst fill rate. Um, those things are really good in her passive. So, you know, that's one of those things where, oh, I just want to use her at 110 for summons and for summon missions. And then getting to 120 is more of a grind, obviously. So you can save that for when you want the rest of her passives. Um, and that's about it. I mean, her damage is good from a finishing perspective as a summoner, um, and she provides a lot of that break removal. So for me, I've used her a lot because break removal or break resistance is pretty uncommon in the game still to this point. We have a handful of units like CG Nickel who can remove breaks or Ayaka who can remove breaks, so it's not super common still. And that's why for me, Aiko's a great summoning choice. Her limit burst being able to fill an entire Esper Bar in a single cast <laughs> is pretty amazing, on top of the fact that she heals. So that's why for me, compared to, and we can talk about Yuna real quick as well since I'm about to mention her, that's why I prefer her compared to Yuna because while I love Yuna and I love Final Fantasy X and I want to take Yuna into every fight, um, the fact that her summon ability does not also heal at the same time it sucks because <laughs> it means she literally just sits there and fills the esper bar and does nothing else and where with Ico, you can actually fill the healer slot you can get strong healing and you can fill the esper bar at the same time or you can get other support things and fill the esper bar so yuna is the unit that you take if you want to be a little more focused on damage because her evocation skills are pretty good but and she also has the advantage of re-raise um which is great, and at 7 stars I do believe she gets Kiraja as well, so she kind of comes into her own as a healer at a later stage. Right now though, compared to Aiko, she's kind of no competition at all. So that's just my take on it. Um, I love Aiko, I use her all the time. If you have Aiko, she's worth the investment. If I had to say to somebody, oh I have the choice between Ayaka or Aiko right now, personally I think that uh, just get <laughs> just level them sparingly and then when you need one that's when you make your decision because they each have unique things in their kits that you may want for a particular uh, for a particular fight so that about covers it i know i normally go more in depth with gear but where she's a support healer unit i mean more spirit for more healing more evo match for summon damage there or or a limit burst fill for her limit burst spam there's not really a lot to it. I mean, she's just a real simple unit that offers a lot of goodness, and uh, I don't see her a lot. Um, and it could it could be because you know she falls out of favor to units like Folka. Um, but it is worth keeping in mind that Ico's enhancements make her healing insane. Uh, they enhance her crypto performance, I think it's called, and that allows her to heal by a tremendous amount. Because um, right now it does about two thirds the pot, uh, it's maybe like half or half the potency of a Kiraja or something like that. So it does good healing. 
um, but not as much as, you know, a simple Curaja or something like that. But when it gets enhancements, it does, I believe, even more healing than a Curaja and fills the evocation gauge by an even greater amount. So as far as healing and, and things like that go for the, the long road, she's going to be a healer that you can use for a very long time. While there are healers that will come out that are better, or summoners that come out that are better, Iko still brings everything to the table that you want and you need in a healer. So, if you like her, you want to use her, invest in her. If you would rather go for another healer like Rem or Ayaka or Lotus Mage Fina in the future, you do that too. I mean, it really doesn't matter. So, um, anyways, if you have any questions about Iko, please ask them in the comments. and. Uh, I'll see everybody on Friday. I'm looking forward to my first ever live stream, and I am super nervous about it, so hopefully it goes well, but uh, I look forward to seeing everybody there. See you on Friday.